And um, so, Jack, what, I know you work closely with Sam, but what are, what are some of the questions you think are most essential as a society as we enter what, what feels like a new chapter? And I, we talked about this backstage. Maybe it's not a new chapter, maybe it is, but technology is increasing at a pace that we've never seen before, and that's unlikely to slow down. What's your sense of the kind of questions we as a society should be asking as this all unfolds? And does, is there anything in the Buddhist scriptures that guides us? <laughs> to, uh... well, I'll get to the Buddhist <laughs> stuff a little bit later because it's a good question and something we also talked about. But I do think that it's important to name the fears in some way and to acknowledge them and to hear from you how you look at First, the kinds of fears of the misuse of the technology, because you heard him. I hope you could hear Sam say, this is just a little window into what's going to happen. So, and already it's happening very quickly. So there's fears of it being misused. There's certainly fears of artificial general intelligence kind of taking over. Um, and those other kinds of fears, you don't seem to be so afraid of that. Can you speak to it, to, to us? I do think things are going to change a lot, and we try to be super upfront about this, uh, and super open about it. We are, part of the reason that we try to release the technology, even in this imperfect state, is that I think it's, we all think at the company, it's really important that the whole world get a sense of what's happening. Um, many people in the field have advocated that this should be developed more in secret. Uh, and there are reasons for that. I don't want to totally dismiss it from a safety perspective. But this is going to be such a massive change to so many aspects of society that we, we need the world as a whole, uh, peop as many people as we can, to understand this, to weigh in on it, for people and institutions to have time to think about this, to understand it, to, to really feel it, and gradually update and decide how we all want to move forward, what a global regulatory framework should be like, what the social norms are going to be, how we want to use this. And I, I think there are gonna be scary times ahead and there's going to be a lot of transition. I'm very confident this can be managed. I think the more we can all do it together, the, the more likely we'll get something that works for all of us. Um, but it does mean we have to confront what I think will be one of the biggest technological changes we've ever had to confront. Um, I think there will be good and bad, far, far more good than bad, like orders of magnitude more good than bad. Um, and there's a lot of different aspects we have to solve problems, so we need a technical solution to be able to align these super intelligent systems. We need this global regulatory framework. Um, we need as much cooperation as we can get between the leading developers. Uh, so I think we need something both like something like an IAEA for advanced AI systems that has global uh, regulatory authority over what these systems are training and how it's used. Uh, we also will need a lot of industry collaboration and we'll need a, a framework, and there's a lot of ways this could go, for as representative of a slice of humanity as we can get, or as much of humanity as we can get, to say, you know, these are the value systems to put in, these are the limits of what the system should never do, this is where it should be customizable. I'm super excited for that project. Um, I think it's like gonna be very exciting to get, to get the collective human wisdom and preferences in uh, and then to see how people use it within that and how that's going to evolve and grow over time. Uh, I hope we'll make a lot of moral progress with these systems. It's been fun to see some of that already with ChatGPT. Um, but I think we will head towards a world where it's not just human intelligence and we have this other thing. And you know, there's like a lot of examples in sci-fi movies. We were talking about one backstage. Like in Star Wars, you kind of just have C-3PO walking around and it's this other thing and sort of surprisingly normal. Um, and they just sort of become part of, I think AI will just become part of society, and it'll be different than human intelligence and very different than other parts of humanity, um, but it'll sort of collectively lift us all up. Mm -hmm. You, the question of values, where we started some years ago, um, can this be programmed in such a way or directed so that it can't be used in malevolent or bad ways or that underlying it, there's the bodhisattva vow or something like that. What's your sense of that, where we are? I mean, certainly a thing I would take is for Jack to just write down 10 pages of, you know, here's what the collective values should be and here's how we all should <laughs> live and we'll have the system do that. Uh, that'd be pretty good. I, I think another way is if, if, you know, let's say someday ChatGPT gets most people on Earth using it 
or everybody on Earth can use it. Um, in that, you could imagine a system asking you a bunch of questions, or you can provide it feedback and sort of teach it, you know, no, this is sort of not what I think is the value. And out of that, uh, the system can learn the collective moral preferences of humanity and how we want to manage trade-offs between that and how we rank things that are in conflict. And then within that, uh, within these very wide bounds, individuals should have a huge amount of autonomy uh, and they can decide, you know, okay, here's what we society have, have globally decided, but here's my value system and here's how I want ChatGPT version 19 to work for me. Um, and I think that'll be a pretty good start.